Okay, in this video I'm going to show you using MPLABX to program a PIC 16F88 microcontroller and assembly. So I've opened up MPLAB and I'm going to either choose that yellow button there or this is exactly the same thing. They both create a new project. So let's just make a new project and it's a standalone project. Next. And I need to select the device. Now you can use this um, family drop down to filter. I never do. I just type pick 16F88. So I just go straight to the device because I know the one I want. Click next. And you get an option list of different hardware tools you could be using. Uh, you'll see that my pick kit is actually connected at the moment. You can see the serial number of it. Um, but I recommend starting with the simulator. Once you've simulated it as working, then you then uh, change the uh, project so that it will use the PIC kit to program it. So go for simulator to start off with. Click next. Uh, the assembler we're going to use, MPASM. Next. Give the project a name. I'll just call it some random thing, P88 test 4, maybe. Um, you'll notice that it also creates a project folder for that. Uh, if you're one of my students doing this at school, I'll have to give you some specific instructions about where you can do this and execute the code. So there are, there are various issues due to the way that your rights have been restricted in school for programming. So anyway, we'll deal with that um, in the lesson. So uh, set this main project. Yeah, just leave all of those options. Their defaults, click finish. And uh, this is the uh, default layout. If you don't get this layout, you can always go window and you can reset your windows if that's helpful. OK, so um, in this uh, project panel here, there's source files and you'll see that there are no source files. Source files are the um, files, text files that you add your code to. So there's nothing in there at the moment where well, we haven't written anything. So we right click source files, choose new. Let's use a simple template. For assembler, ASM, that's the assembler one. Leave the name, that's fine. Leave the um, folder and project name, they're all fine. Click finish. Okay, that's my um, source file. And what I could do if I wanted, now either of these are going to do pretty much the same thing. Don't worry about the difference. Uh, what they're going to do, they're going to assemble the code. This one is the most complete, it will completely uh, reassemble the whole project, but your project's only got one file, so really there's no difference between these two. I'll just click that one. There's an output uh, panel down here, and you'll see it says build successful, which means that the assembly was successful. Uh, so you could, if you wanted, run the code. Remember, this is a simulation, and it's running. And there's no actual end in this program. Uh, we come to why this this is constantly repeating in our code, never actually gets further than that. But don't worry about that. We're not looking at the code too much for the moment. Uh, so the code is running, and you can tell that because it is uh, this red button is is available, so you can stop the um, simulating code. You'll also see, yeah, we've got a simulation in progress there. So just click stop. And so we need to now um, extend the code a little bit because it doesn't do anything useful. So the first thing we need to do is to get these configuration bits. There's already a prompt here. Uh, you notice the semicolon just means that that whole line is a comment. So let's give ourselves a bit of room. And then go window. Uh, target memory views. We need to get the configuration bits. Uh, wizard, I suppose you'd call it. Yeah, that thing. Now this panel that's opened up at the bottom, if you want, uh, you can you know, adjust the size if that's helpful to you. And uh, there's various things we need to adjust here in our configuration. So uh, first one, this, this is the um, oscillator. This is the clock that sets the instruction frequency for the microcontroller. Now I want to use an internal clock. So it's these two that are the option. And you've got the option to use an internal clock and then the pins that could have been used for an external clock can be used for I.O. That's that one. 
or if you want uh, you can actually use the internal clock and then you can actually output the uh, instruction um, the, well hang on uh, how to express it um, if say you've got like a four megahertz external clock the instruction frequency will be one quarter of that so one megahertz and then you can output that one megahertz if you want back out of one of the clock pins well do you need to do that probably not at the moment so just go for the this one internal clock and then uh, leave the pins available these ones um, RA6 and RA7 just leave those as IO okay uh, watchdog timer you definitely want off don't worry about that for the moment but must have it off um, power up timer enable bit just leave that one off um, this this one um, uh, we actually want that that particular pin we actually want it to be a uh, a reset pin a master clear pin so I'm going to leave that one on uh, brown out reset enable bit you can leave that one on doesn't matter low voltage programming off uh, code protection don't want that off uh, flash program memory memory right enable bits leave that one off most of them in fact you could leave off um, but they're not going to cause us a problem the one the one that's going to be really important to you is uh, setting that one so we need the internal clock because we're not going to have an external clock and you must turn the uh, watchdog timer off having done at least those two generate the source code which just outputs it to like a text window you can select that you can copy it and then you can then paste it now I'll just uh, collapse that panel and it's probably confused you what I've done there but that is the text I just that we generated and then we pasted into our source file um, you'll notice that um, it's got some comments I mean if you don't want the comments you can delete them that's not a problem uh, but this you must have this is a, um, a directive so this is the thing a directive is just something that gives direction or an instruction to the uh, assembler so this tells the assembler that it should locate and insert the contents of p16f88.inc file which has got various useful stuff for us now I've opened it up and this is the the actual file of p16f88.inc and so for example if ever we wanted to um, for example access the uh, tris a special function register we wouldn't need to remember that its memory address is hex decimal 0085 we could just refer to it by name so um, that name equates to that value more about that another time okay uh, so but that is important to have that include there and then we've got the configuration bits so these things are going to be used by the uh, assembler um, to configure the microcontroller for example we turn the watchdog timer off so you see that there uh, you see it there okay and um, yeah so they're all fine now when, whenever you make a small even a small change I recommend just reassembling and it should say build successful which it does okay and so still not actually doing anything uh, hugely useful but um, it would be very nice wouldn't it if we could actually see whether we could download this code onto our microcontroller now by the way just before we do that I'd just like to point out that at, at this point we have not yet set the uh, speed of the internal oscillator the frequency of the internal oscillator so it's going to default to a value we can find out what that value is later but um, just because we've selected the internal oscillator doesn't mean we know what the internal oscillator frequency is anyway um, if you go to this dashboard thing here you can click this uh, spanner icon project properties 
And so this time around, I'm going to say I want to use the pick kit three, and I want to use that particular one that's connected up. And then I just click on OK. And then this time around, you'll see that I've got these things. So you can actually download code. So it's the make, same thing there, but it's going to make it, and then it's going to download it to my um, to my pick, uh, which is on the breadboard. So uh, making sure that my um, making sure that my circuit is switched on, which it is now, and um, then should be ready. The uh, pick kit is connected up. The pick kit um, is connected up via a header connector to my breadboard. So I'm going to just uh, download it now, or make and download it. Okay, so uh, there's this warning about. Um, Voltage issues, don't worry about that. Click on OK. And you'll see it's uh, connecting to the pick kit, it's detecting target voltages, it's erased the um, pick microcontroller, it's programming the pick microcontroller, and perfect. It's programmed it and it's verified as complete. OK. So although my program doesn't actually do anything or doesn't do anything useful at the moment, I have been successful in programming my PIC microcontroller. So I think I'm going to stop the video there so it doesn't get too long. Uh, the next video, um, when I get around to it, will be showing you how to add some useful code, maybe we'll flash some LEDs on or off or something like that. Okay, that's it.